Hey everyone, welcome back to Apollo Art Analysis. This episode would we'll be studying a piece by the established AI generative artist and his artificial inspiration gallery. This episode, we're really going to be investigating what does it mean to kind of discover a mythological beast once lost to the passage of time. So let's jump right into it. So whenever you first see this work, remember this lone griffin here, really surrounded by countless natural motifs. The viewer's first impression is likely one of awe due to the incredibly ornate nature of the work before us here. So what you'll notice, of course, the placement in center certainly makes form impossible to miss. It feels like like everything revolves around this central subject, right? We also see, of course, multiple accents in that as well to imply depth. Of course, a light on dark accent, but within that you have a dark on light accent, like I said, multiple layers within that, which you'll also notice, of course, the placement of our composition here. It feels like everything revolves around the central plaque as these kind of bronze flowers appear to bloom from behind. So they kind of pop out and certainly catch the eye without a doubt, which I'll also notice, of course, this kind of frames our composition as well. It directs our attention directly onto our main subject as the griffin. So you'll notice, of course, in the realm of color, this scheme is quite interesting. It's actually a split complementary scheme. What you'll notice is this kind of oranges, this blue, but a bit of green as well. So what you'll notice, of course, blue and green are gonna be those harmonizing colors, but this kind of bronze, almost oranges color is exactly what's going to be popping out there. So the result is quite balanced, but of course it's contrasting that orange or that golden kind of value that we have there. It's incredibly interesting, which you'll also notice this brilliant sense of texture. You know, we see this primarily around the feathers, of course, on the wings as well. You'll also see, of course, texture all throughout the bronze motifs as well throughout this work at hand. It feels incredibly realistic and it does an incredible job of kind of immersing us within the work at hand. It also introduces a bit of visual energy, right, as well. So you see this, it feels like it's kind of flowing in the wind in a way. So I think that's also incredibly important here. So all these natural motifs, you know, you're not going to miss them. We see, of course, what appears to be a rose in some way or another, some vines. We see just so many different things kind of growing across the composition incredibly important here it feels incredibly ornate as well you know when you create something that's ornate as this it takes quite a lot of resources right it's kind of a testament to just how well that culture is kind of harmonizing kind of working together to create the composition for us here that's also incredibly interesting it's luxurious and it does an incredible job at immersing us within that luxury so the title here is quite interesting right it's lost beast of the manuscript so it's kind of hinting at a moment of reveal or this kind of a moment of of revitalization, if you will. Kind of a moment of discovery as well. Incredibly interesting here. And a manuscript is traditionally uh, you know, looking back, it is kind of a handwritten book. So now when we have the the uh, printing press and the type and everything like that, it's kind of hard to think about a manuscript or even why we would do that. But of course, going back in history, they're incredibly important. And so this is a chimeric creature as well. So it is a griffin. And chimeric creatures are quite interesting, right? You know, perhaps the most popular we know of is going to be the dragon, right? The dragon has that kind of serpentine-like form. It has wings, of course, from the uh, a bird, eagle, anything like that. It almost appears like a bat, mostly. And we also see, of course, talons coming from a bird as well. You know, it's incredibly interesting. Of course, it also breathes fire. So a chimeric creature, the dragon, is an incredible example of that. And chimeric creatures really go all the way back to ancient times and likely way, way, way beyond that as well. Because, you know, the art that we look at today, many of these things existed as kind of um, uh, verbal storytelling over time. So it's very likely that winged creatures such as this existed way beyond that as well. So not just ancient times, but likely way before that. And so with chimeric creatures, they are almost always abstractions in some way or another. What we mean by that is they take certain elements of the kind of original animal spirit or even ideas such as fire and integrates them into one unified body. So the griffin, for example, is an incredibly ancient symbol. You know, we point to ancient Egypt as some of those examples there, but, you know, depictions of the lion have gone back even further, right? So, for example, we have an Assyrian lion up top there. Oops, what's the move? Yeah, we have the Assyrian lion and then we have the griffin as well, right? So we certainly see that you see the back legs, the lion there, and then we have, of course, the eagle or any type of very strong winged creature there. So absolutely stunning. The griffin is just such an important symbol. When we look at the realm of the gods, we normally look to the sky, right? So anything that has wings is going to be divine by nature, whether it's an angel or one of these chimeric creatures like this. And we talked about that before. Of course, the strength and the determination of the lion as well. So when you integrate this into one creature, you're kind of combining all of those spirits and all of those elements as well. It's incredibly 
incredibly interesting in the Griffin. Of course, we've seen it in so many different things from pop culture, such as Harry Potter, going all the way back to medieval times, ancient Egypt, so many different things you could truly point to there. You know, it's incredibly powerful. It is incredibly smart, and it really combines that quite well. So really hope y'all enjoyed. With this in mind, you know, what do y'all see when you view this piece? You know, how do you feel the symbol kind of relates to you, and how have you always seen this symbol as? You know, two very important questions when we're looking at this work. And I'm not sure if I mentioned earlier, but this is an AI generative work. So it was created in an AI generative art program. This is going to be MidJourney. MidJourney really is the perfect mix of accessibility and power for the user. So if you want to get into the AI generative art world, whether you're someone new, you know, everyone from amateurs all the way to professionals use MidJourney. So I would surely suggest it if y'all want to check it out. Really hope y'all enjoyed today. We talked about so many different things, you know, those kind of chimeric creatures and mythology. We talked about these kind of ornate symbols, of course, contrast, luxury. Uh, so many different things we truly hit on today. I really hope y'all enjoyed. If y'all did, go check out the original artist, Artificial Inspiration Gallery, doing some amazing stuff in the world of AI generative art. My name is Apollo. This was Apollo Art Analysis, and I'll see y'all on the next episode. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you'd like to support our work directly, please check out our Apollo community tokens. Polar Art Exchange is an ecosystem of art appreciation which elevates artists each and every day. Thanks for listening.